grab the mic. Okay. That's a good start. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess uh, first UFC Media Day. How's the uh, fight camp been? How's fight week been for this massive card? And you know, welcome to your first media day. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Just walking up the stairs, a uh, lot of people here, a lot of, a lot of cameras. It's uh, yeah, it's been unreal. Um, yeah, definitely not what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, the training camp's been really good. Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, best one yet. Like I've just been able to focus on uh, on this fight. Um, and yeah, the whole experience has just been uh, yeah, just unreal. Just an amazing experience. What specifically about this, besides being able to you know just focus on your opponent, but why was this the best camp you've had? Um, like I got uh, a few sponsors on board, like after after signing with the UFC, and um, yeah, just been able to just uh, train and, and not have to wor worry about uh, working too much. I was able to reduce my hours. Um, so yeah, just been able to train and uh, focus on fighting. Um, whereas opposed prior fights that I've had, I've had to uh, to manage yeah working full time and and all the rest. Um, so yeah, this has been the best camp for sure. Where were you working? I uh, just working for myself, just do uh, electrical uh, work. Um, yeah, uh, and, and I run a, a martial arts school as well, which I'm still doing now. Um, but yeah, I, I own and run a martial arts school with my wife. Um, and uh, we got three kids as well, so it's just like, yeah, it's a lot, a lot on our plate. And um, but yeah, this has been able to take some of the weight off, like uh, you know, signing with the UFC, and um, yeah, it's a dream come true, and it's uh, living the dream. Like, get to train full time, pretty much. Uh, you know, m my job now is just uh, coaching at my gym. You know, so it's still martial arts, um, still in the game, still teaching the the next generation sort of thing. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, yeah, like I said, dream come true. When you say electrical work, is that like? going to someone's house as an electrician? Like, what exactly are you, do what are you doing? Yeah, I'm an electrician by trade. Um, so, yeah, just doing whatever. Um, lights. Is yeah. that equally as hard on the body? Uh, yes and no. Yeah, like, it, it, yeah, like working, you know, working for, you know, 12-hour days or whatever is, is rough uh, on, on the body. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I don't have to do it anymore. No, I don't have to crawl in roofs and... And, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff and get underneath dirty houses and stuff. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about it. And obviously, what do you make of your opponent, Jesus Aguilar? Uh, did you know who he was? Did you watch tape on him? What do you make of his skill set? Um, I've seen it. I've seen just the one fight, you know, the one he's probably most famous for, uh, you know, knocking out um, <laughs> like another Aussie uh, from Gold Coast, uh, Shannon Ross. You know, I think, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's uh, made the runs. Um, I saw that, but I, I didn't know him prior besides, besides that fight. Um, what do I think of him? Um, I think, yeah, I think he's a power puncher with, with, uh, good wrestling. Um, he's had a, he's had three fights in the UFC now and, and a contender series fight. So he's got, you know, some experience on me, but, um, yeah, I'm excited about this fight. I think it's a good matchup for me. So normal, cause he had most of his wins have come by submission. Um, yep. and then he, his most famous one, like you said, though, is that pretty violent overhand. I think it was an overhand right that knocked him out. And you see sometimes grapplers can, when they feel that they can knock someone out, maybe they don't use their grappling. Maybe they get maybe overconfident in their hands. Are you expecting that, or did you prepare for the guy that you know has six, seven submission wins under his belt? M most of his submission wins, like uh, like their guillotines, like five of them, like they they usually like off a reactive takedown, like someone shoots takedown and grabs them, or um, uh, so um, like he's striking. He does strike. Um, like I watched some older film of him, um, and he does throw hands and then um, shoot for takedowns. But um, yeah, I'm just, just, ready f just ready for everything he brings. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to bring, whether he's going to like, I, I imagine like it, the game plan would be to, to stay on the feet and, and strike a bit more. But um, yeah, we don't, we don't know until we, we're in there. And then two, mo two ones unrelated to your fight. Um, I know you're relatively new into the UFC and everything, but I don't know if you saw, but November 1st, they're going to implement those new rules that allow 12 to six elbows and redefined grounded opponents. So I can see the smile on your face. Yes. That, do you like those rule changes? I love those rule changes. Yeah, absolutely. Bring back soccer kicks as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I love those rule changes. Um, groin strikes, bring them bring in. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, 12 to 6 elbows, that, that's great. It shouldn't have been, I think, yeah, it shouldn't have been a rule in the first place. Um, grounded opponents, that's a real interesting one. That's a real interesting one. Like, uh, my, my game's definitely developed uh, over the years, and, like, my full fights, last four fights, I've won all by TKO. So when I say grappler, like, when I consider myself a grappler, it's a grappler to, to do damage, you know? So I take people down, try to finish the fight on the ground. Um, 12 to 6 just gives me another 
I like in Christ. Yeah, my imagination's going wild with that, like the positions you can get, uh, the things you can do. And then the knees, right, like the knees to the head, like it's only if your hands so are touching. You need na- the, the new rules are basically you need something else besides your hand. So it'd be like your yes. hand and your hip or your oh, elbow. Man. You can't play that game anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's incredible. I find myself in that position all the time. Uh, people playing that game, like touching just the fingertips yeah. on the ground, and I'm like, oh man, I wish I'd kick you in the head right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, that I'm really excited about, that. especially that one. I find myself in that position a lot uh, when I'm when I'm taking guys down. They just p- place a hand on the mat to avoid uh, getting kicked or need. Um, so yeah, like I'm all for it. I'm all for it. The last one. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Drikus and Israel? Um, yeah, no, what a, what a main event. It's incredible. Um, I, d- I don't know how the fight's going to go. It's going to be an interesting one. Um, but, yeah, it's a huge main event. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think Adesanya's going to take it and um, and upset upset a lot of people, and it's going to be epic. Can you give us your uh, left, mate? Back here. Yep. I hate Josh. How, How you doing? Good, mate. Um, so obviously, a, you know, UFC event, you got a whole lot of new media here and, and new fans that uh, may not be familiar with you, I guess. What are some things you'd want the uh, the new members of the public and the, and the media to know about, about you as a person and, and you as a fighter as well? Uh, great question, Josh. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, what do you want to know about me? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've, been at, I've been in the sport for a while. I've been training for, uh, you know, 15 years. Um, you know, family man, I got three kids, uh, you know, was working full-time job as electrician, uh, you know, born in the Solomon Islands, uh, you know, that's an interesting topic for a lot of people, I guess, like first Solomon Island fighter to be on the UFC, I, I just got told that just in the back room um, by one of the, one of the guys, um, that yeah, uh, first Solomon born fighter um, in the UFC, so that's, that's pretty cool, uh, what else about me? Um, I look to hurt people, I don't know, I look to finish fights, uh, that's something, I've got seven out of eight finishes, uh, and I'm always looking to finish fights uh, and put on a show. And on the, uh, on the Solomon Islands, for, for those that might know might not know the story, I guess if, if you were quick to share a, a quick little glimpse of, of, of what that was like, and, and I guess, yeah, the, the, the story you got coming over here. Yeah, like, uh, it was, it was uh, I have really good memories about, about the place. Um, I was six when we moved to Australia, and there, there was um, not very good times, like uh, some ethnic tensions and, and craziness happening over there, so we moved to Australia. But um, I've got nothing but like amazing memories of the place. I went back when I was nine, when things settled down a little bit, um, and then things popped off again, and uh, you know, you know, burning towns, and you know, it was a pretty crazy time. Um, so then we moved back to Australia pretty much for, for good after that. But I spent about nine years of my early, early life in the Solomon Islands. Um, and I've got just, yeah, uh, as a child, just amazing memories of the place. I really love the place. And I've gone back for holidays and stuff. And, and uh, I've said it to, to an interview before. Like, I definitely see myself retiring there one day. And, like, I don't know, I just love, I love the lifestyle there. You know, just fishing and, you know, laying in a hammock. I'm definitely, definitely, uh, yeah, island boy at heart. I just love that, uh, being outdoors and, and uh, yeah, doing a bit of spearfishing. Not very good at it, but uh, I have a crack and, um yeah, no, Solomon Islands uh, has a big place in my heart. But uh, I've lived most of my life in Australia, and uh, yeah, I definitely um, represent Australia first and foremost um, as my as m- you know where I'm Australian, you know. But, uh, but um, yeah, Solomon Islands uh, has a big place in my heart. And last one for me. Um, obviously, Beatdown Promotions is the promotion you fought on predominantly um, before getting signed. Obviously, for those that don't know, Junior Tafa fought. Um, on, on Beatdown Promotions, but you become the first fighter that's had multiple fights for Beatdown Promotions um, run by former UFC um, uh, athlete ba- Damian Brown. So I guess what does that mean to you um, to, to push them along and, and to help them rise in Australian MMA? Yeah, it means a lot to me. Like, um, yeah, Beatdown Promotions are an incredible show. Um, yeah, I went and watched the first show and uh, I was like, oh man, the production is incredible. Uh, and I knew I wanted to fight on there, and then I had my first fight on there, and it was perfect. Like, it was all run on schedule. Um, you know, Damien's, you know, ex-UFC fighter, he knows what the big show's like. He knows, like, uh, that you guys run a tight ship, and it's just incredible, and he's trying to, like, emulate that. On, you know, on obviously, a smaller scale, smaller budget, um, but he's done an incredible job with that show, and I just uh, keep coming back because it's just, yeah, epic show. Great fights. Yeah, great. Steve, just over here to your right. Hey. Hey. Uh, you're a man who has been signed to the UFC directly. Uh, a teammate of yours went through contender, but uh, you got directly in. Uh, what does that mean for you, and does that add any pressure getting straight in? 
oh yeah, like like I said, man, it's just a dream come true. This is uh, yeah, this is unreal. Um, but uh, does it add any pressure? It would have been nice maybe to like have a little step up, some like a little stepping stone in between. Like this is crazy. I heard on fight nights you don't do this, um, <laughs> this sort of thing. Um, but this is this is a uh, yeah, this is a lot for me. Um, but no, it's uh. But yeah, this is where I want to be. You know, this is ultimately where I want to be. So um, I'm gonna embrace it. Like, uh, it's not too much. Like, it's fine. Like, it's um, yeah, it's been, it's been a great week. And yeah, but um, yeah, there's no extra pressure. I'm just yeah. At the end of the day, it's a fight. You know, we're gonna go out there and fight. It's the same, uh, same anywhere. You know, like uh, you just gotta dial in when you get in there and touch gloves. And, and it's just another man in front of you. Just um, yeah. Why do you think you got signed directly and then didn't go through the contender? Uh, right time, right place. I mean, the, yeah, it's hard. Like there were there were a few people um, vying for the spot, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not the I'm not the you know the guy that makes those decisions. Um, but yeah, like I'm just yeah just grateful to be here. And but yeah, I, I don't I don't make those decisions. Um, so I, I have no idea. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked and I can't wait to to put on a performance. Uh, during your time on the regionals, there was a bit of a a, a triangle at your weight class uh, with you, Sean Gauchy, and Anthony Drillich. Uh, those two other men are signed to Dana White's Contender Series with the rumor being they're going to fight each other. I think that's confirmed, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on that matchup? Uh, I think I think Sean, Sean wins that one. Um, I've done some training with Sean. Um, but yeah, I think it's an awesome fight. You know, anything can happen. Um, but yeah, I think Sean, uh, Sean wins that fight. Uh, I think it's a great fight. Um, yeah, I, I just... Uh, I think Sean's got more tools to win that fight. As I mentioned before, you were a teammate of Tom Nolan. Uh, what has the feeling been like in the training room where you're both gearing up to the both the biggest fights of your lives? Yeah, the atmosphere is pretty uh, pretty awesome at the gym. Like, there's a few guys, not just um, not just Tom and I, but there's a few guys fighting and stuff. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter if it's a, the UFC or I mean, it's, I mean, it does. But a fight's a fight. Like, you're gonna give it everything, right? You're gonna give it 100 percent, whether you're fighting on the local scene or fighting um, in the UFC. Like, at least that's what I've always done. I've always just given every fight camp my 100% effort. Um, and a lot of the guys are fighting. Um, and uh, so, yeah, everyone's, yeah, everyone's full steam ahead, like getting after it. And, um, yeah, it's been, been a great camp. Uh, last one from me. Uh, you mentioned about how this is all a bit hectic yes. to, to immediately be dropped into this. Uh, Tom Nolan is a man who has had a few more UFC fights uh, than yourself. Uh, did he give you any advice with dealing with kind of the new level that the UFC brings? Yeah, like I, I ask him questions and stuff, but you don't like, man, I'm still like taken by surprise coming up the stairs. <laughs> like, you know, it's still like, you know, you can tell me what it's going to be like to walk out to 6,000 people in RSC Arena, but like, you know, to do it is something else. Like, I, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to feel the same uh, feelings that I have now, like just excitement and um yeah, you know, it's the, you know, you can't prepare for it. You know, you've got to come out here and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, do your best. Thank you very much. No worries, thank you. And uh, Stewie, with your newfound fame, you've obviously got a lot of people online and comments. You've been posting it recently about just complete randoms with their thoughts on your abilities. Uh, <laughs> how has that been to adjust to? Um, yeah, no, it's good. Like, I, 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 uh, I think there's a lot of comedy out there, eh? Like, uh like a lot of positive messages. I've been seeing some weird memes and stuff and, and stuff out there. I, I think it's been awesome. Uh, Tom, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, said probably like the advice he gave me is probably like stay off that stuff. But I've been enjoying it. Eh? I've been soaking it up and reading the comments and, you know, liking and replying here and there where I can. You know, it's a busy week, but I try to get back to people and, um, yeah, soak it all in and have a good time with it. And uh, finally, this is, uh, I mean, your first event. Uh, of course, you're going to look back on this one day. And in five years, when you watch this back, I mean, where will you be? Uh, at the top. Uh, uh, yeah, five years. That's, uh, yeah, I, I plan on being at the top before then. Um, and then, you know, five, six years' time, you know, when I'm 30, I'm 29, I'm not, I'm not super young. You know, when I'm 34, 35, I'd probably be looking, you know, at uh, closing the chapter. Um, so I'm going full steam ahead, uh, trying to get as far as I can, um, as soon as I can, and you know, stay busy. And but uh, you know, the the flyweight division, I think, like has a, a shorter life. You know, like I think, uh, you know, I mean, the 35 curse. You know, for under under lightweights, I believe that's real. You know, because we rely so much on speed. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, five years, five, six years' time, I'll, I'll hopefully uh, be retiring undefeated. Do you think you'll get a title shot quicker than Steve Ersig? Oh, man, that's, that's got to be a like closer record. No, no, I, I, I don't think so. But um, what is it? One year, was he? Was it less than a year? Like, that's, you know, that'll be hard to beat. That'll be really hard to beat. Let's just take this one fight at a time. Thank you guys for having me.